Hello and welcome back to The Blame Game. This week is a special episode only focusing on one single game. TSM has clawed their way up from the bottom of the table and put Immortals into 10th place. And we're gonna look at exactly how they managed to pull that off. This game also just had a lot of people leaving comments about being in the blame game. So let's give the people what they want. Before we dive in, I just wanna make sure my chat says hi to the people who were saying hi. Hello, Snub Hawk. Uh, remember, I record these live on Monday morning. So if you ever wanna join in with chat and I, make sure to go to my Twitch page. Also make sure to like, comment, subscribe to Travis's Gaffords. YouTube channel, that's where all of my lead content goes these days. Alrighty, this game had a lot of topics to cover, primarily Arrow's CS as well as PoE's build. However, this matchup had a really interesting game state because of what happened at level one. So we're actually gonna start with that topic since it will matter for everything else we talk about. A lot of teams are using Nautilus's level one for lane blitz strategies, and this game was no different. TSM sent Shenyi up to put a ward in the top lane. I'm not sure if this was to counter Graves level one brush abuse for the Aurelia matchup or for a potential Nautilus Blitz top strat, but either way, it's a complete misprioritization of how to defend. Nautilus Blitz mid is actually a two hit combo and why it is the preferred attack. If you force the flash mid, you can also spill over to a secondary point. If no one goes mid, you just get the inside track to spill over and then the enemy has no idea it's coming. Because TSM send no one mid for the knot to hook, Immortal just roll over to Spica's point. His pixel ward still won't give information early enough to save a flash, and Spica is caught in the shop because he wants to swap out his ward for a sweeper. This half second delay means that the hook lands even after flashing, but Spica was in trouble no matter what. This snowball continues with Cass level one prio being used to kill him on his red right after. I wanna stress, from this position, the game should be completely over. How exactly Immortals throw this game will tie into Arrow's CS, so let's pop over to that topic for a second. Through the first five minutes of the game, Arrow falls about 10 CS down as a result of his own last hitting, from what I can tell on the minimap and the wave states. At 540, the wave is slow pushing away from him when TSM moved to contest Immortals' dragon. This fight puts an extra 1.5k gold in their pocket at the cost of Arrow's wave, which is still absolutely a good trade. When we come out of the replay, Tactical has already caught the wave, putting Arrow down 30 CS. At eight minutes, a Speaker gank burns Arrow's flash, which will force him to play extra defensive for the next set of plays. His farm stays around 30 CS down until Immortals reset for a Rift Herald force. They erroneously assume TSM won't contest this Rift Herald and are probably posturing around bottom. Arrow, thinking that he is flashless on the weak side, stays away from the turret and falls even further behind in farm. In reality, TSM are avoiding a Rift Herald fight, but it's in order to pull off a lane gank in the top lane. The reason that Immortals misunderstood where TSM was on the map is the single most important mistake from this entire game. It's their horrendous vision control and their map movements. From 3.30 until 13.30, Immortals never place a deep ward. Immortals fails to use the perma mid prio of a 4-0 Cassio over a starved jungler to actually counter jungle Spica or get a deep ward on his clear path. They don't shove Speak off any of his camps and they do nothing to control the game. They play reacted to TSM the whole way. At any point, Xerse or Destiny could have paired up with PoE and pressed into the enemy jungle for wards. At 9.55, Nautilus is bot lane while Shenyi is clearing out wards on the top side of the map, but they're using assist me pings in the bot lane because I think they think Spica might be there before he ends up showing mid. Shenyi is able to get all over the map while Immortals play catch up. At 10.30, when they shove Shenyi out of their jungle, Immortal throws all their wards down immediately in the river rather than pressing into TSM's jungle as a unit. It's super useless and super redundant to use this many wards. What happens next is just one of the saddest things I've seen this split. Xerse and Destiny run up and down the river multiple times with no idea where TSM members are. They head down bot to potentially look for a gank before turning around to help out PoE it looks like before going down back bot lane because finally they realized Spica was in the lane. They are chasing onto TSM instead of forcing onto them. TSM was never going to fight them on this dragon and were only looking for lane ganks. TSM sack the dragon for a tempo advantage, and off of that, clear all of the wards out of mortals just invested trying to get that dragon. IMT now think that they are getting bot dove and back off the wave again completely, while in reality, TSM just went back to their side of the map. At 12.20, Shenyi has wrapped around to the top side without Immortals knowing, before moving top and finally finding a fight on Revenge. IMT seems so frustrated from their total inability to snowball a one game that PoE decides to 4v2, 
and hands over a massive 700 gold shutdown to the Aurelia, which now puts a ton of pressure on the Graves, who is doing okay in the matchup until now. This brings me to PoE and inevitably his build. I'm recording this on Monday and the counter circle jerk is already in full force about his build. And so at this point, I think everyone knows that it is meta for high elo Cassiopeia to build like this. It's better for Cassio to build tankier to stay in fights longer and get her damage off without fear rather than squishy and have to play safe. The idea being that your DPS uptime will lead to a better performance rather than the raw damage numbers. And this makes sense, especially against the four melee on the side of TSM. What I can't understand is acting like Cassiopeia is Jax and leaving her in the side lane to split 24 seven when she's built explicitly the team fight. At 20 minutes into the game, they sack top and mid priority to set up for Dragon a minute before it spawns. Instead of going mid after and getting vision and moving the Cassiopeia around for control, they let her sit bot lane to make a play. For two minutes, they ignore the top half of the map, which does let them kill Huni and grab Dragon, but gives the Baron to a 1-3-1 comp, which promptly uses it to take over the game. If you want to see the futility of fed tank side lane cast, look at 25 minutes in when PoE fails to kill a flashless tactical while using his own flash, nor can he take the turret afterwards because tactical steps on top of the miasma. Some people were criticizing a Zonia's that they thought he was building, but it was really just a stopwatch. And even that you can maybe criticize a little bit since there wasn't a massive AOE wombo combo like the J4 Orianna, and a stopwatch is really just a self-stun for Cassio, who has no DPS downtime. Even if you miss your poison, you can still spam E for Conqueror stacks and whatnot. But honestly, Soul Point fight is coming up, and there is no single item that can have a bigger impact in the team fight in the game at that point. I don't think PoE would have gone full Zonia's and was just buying one for this last team fight for Soul. The real problem is how he used it, misclicking it over Gargoyle and locking him in place when he could have killed Huni during that window and then killed the rest of TSM. This misclick single-handedly cost them the rest of the fight. So to recap everything from this game, PoE's build is 100% fine in my book. He also made some of the most positive plays for his team this game, but his mistakes, the 2v4 shutdown and some of the late game decisions were fucking massive in comparison. Arrows, poor CSing isn't fully excused, but the biggest reasons he fell behind are actually more team related. Finally, the vast majority of your criticism this game should be going to their vision control and map movements. The fact that Immortals could not snowball this game from level two is a travesty. This week's comment of the week goes to none other than Reginald. Leaning into the memes is always a good idea. And honestly, since he sold his house, there is no way to consider TSM the worst team in the league. The way they moved around the map and looked for lane ganks and avoided vision against immortals was honestly kind of impressive. That's gonna do it for this week of the blame game. Thank you all for watching. The playoff dream is still technically alive for TSM if I understand the tiebreakers correctly. And it all comes down to this super weekend. So make sure to tune in this Friday. You know, sometimes when it's your job to do something and you can't figure out how to do it because you filmed so many outros over the years, and now you're just awkwardly at the end of somebody's YouTube video and they're sitting there being like, is this really happening? Is he just saying he doesn't know what outro to do? Uh, well, if you're like that, then you might want to consider getting an Alienware computer. Uh, because if I had one in front of me right now, maybe I'd have like a script that I've written on it that would be something I could refer to instead of this weird ad lib thing that I'm doing right now. No, honestly, Alienware's got great stuff. We've been using everything that they create for years. Uh, for TGI, I can actually officially say that now because it's just been like literal years. There's two years that just now where I wasn't even out here and we were using their stuff to do remote interviews and it was awesome. Uh, they allow us to create wonderful 4K videos like this one and I really appreciate their support. So if you appreciate my videos, understand that we couldn't do it without them. So go check them out. There's a link in the description below.